Today I fucked up by accidentally sending hearts and I love you to a girl I followed on Instagram. Not today, a few days ago. My girlfriend posted a picture of us on her Instagram story and as always, I wanted to react to it with hearts and tell her I love her. When I opened her story, I accidentally skipped stupid Instagram gestures to to the next story. Swiped back to my girlfriend's story and sent her the usual hearts and I love you messages. Even though I had replied on my girlfriend's story, the messages got sent as a reply to story I had accidentally skipped to. I didn't realize this happened till the girl who I accidentally responded to, a mutual friend from high school, starting hearting those responses and replied WTF. Quickly, I unsent the replies but she had already seen them. I had a very embarrassing conversation with her trying to explain myself about Instagram glitching, maybe, and sending her the hearts and I love you messages instead. She found it funny and told me she burst out laughing when she saw those messages. I resent the messages to my girlfriend and had to double check if I didn't accidentally send them to someone else again. When I told my girlfriend this happened, she burst out laughing too. Thought you guys might this fun funny too. Too long didn't read, Instagram glitched out and sent a random girl I followed I love you messages which were intended for my girlfriend. Oh boy. Twice the gifts to purchase this Valentine's Day Valentine, heart with ribbon? Doesn't seem much like harm was done. Thanks for sharing this little awkward moment and your frantic reaction, made me chuckle smile. And now you know that this other girl isn't into you which is also good info to have, just in case. The fact that her GF found that funny shows how strong your relationship is. Also I wouldn't consider this a foo because it is kinda hilarious. Good relationship you both have where a few can result in joy. Today I fucked up by prepping for a job interview. Had a video interview today for a job I've been wanting for years. It was right up my alley, I already know some people in the company, etc. One of my friends on the inside warned me that the interviewers love questions like name your top strengths and what are your three biggest weaknesses. So I got up this morning, opened up Word, and started brainstorming. What are my positive attributes? What are my negative ones? An hour later, I was ready to give up on life. In the positive column, I'd identified four qualities. There are four good things I can say about myself after an hour's reflection. There were 57 negative attributes. 57 things put me in the do not touch box. 57 reasons why not. I guess I'd never really looked that hard at myself, because it shook me up. I had that interview a short while later and just muddled through. There was no connection or chemistry and I flubbed some basic questions. I could hear myself speaking in a monotone, never mustering the enthusiasm I always bring to a meeting. I couldn't believe it. I was depressed. The interview ended abruptly with a promise that we'll let you know in the next few weeks. I didn't realize until a half hour later that they never asked anything about my strengths or weaknesses. Heh, too long didn't read. I tried to prepare for an interview by brainstorming positive things to say about myself and ended up spiraling into depression and almost certainly losing the job. I doubt you have that many negative traits, we tend to judge ourselves much harsher than others. If someone else was to make the list about you, I bet the numbers would be reversed. When I brain fart or get a mind blank in a Zoom meeting slash interview, I stare straight in the camera and don't move a muscle until they look away. Then I animate myself and say, sorry I lost you there for a second must be a bad connection. This breaks any tension and I can sorta of revise what I said previously. You can do a maximum of two freezes I found. Then your dog walks past in the background. The biggest weakness question is a pain, but it is common in interviews. My dad coached me to say something that was negligible, oh yeah, I work too hard and also I hate taking overtime pay so I work for free instead. Depending on the job, being a certain level of honest is important to being taken seriously. For example, when I interviewed for my current job, I cited as my weakness that I was lacking experience in a specific part of the job, 
and said that part of the reason why I applied was because I wanted to develop myself in that area. That turns the question around, explains a possible hole in your resume so you show that you're aware of your potential shortcomings, but it also tells them that it's something you want to improve and that you care about the job. I would encourage you to provide an honest professional weakness, but not an obvious never touch this guy thing, but explain how it's something you're working on and what you're doing about it. Edit, another common trap question, explain a time you failed and what you did about it. Perhaps this is the wake up call needed for you to work on reducing the negatives and increasing your positives. Can't lose something you never had. I always judge my days by saying, did I die? If the answer is no the day went well. Well I mean, the answer doesn't matter. Just that you can even ask yourself that is valid enough. Today I fucked up by scratching jalapeno pepper oil all over my naughty bits. Today my wife decided to make stuffed jalapenos. We've never made them ourselves so it was an exciting family experience. She cut them up, I scooped out all the extra stuff inside, and my youngest daughter made sure they were all clean and free of seeds. All went well. They were a hit at the dinner table and perfectly complemented our gourmet meal of frozen taquitos, chips and melted craft cheddar cheese, and store-bought salsa. I know, nothing spectacular but it got the job done. I rubbed my lips with my hands at one point and noticed that they got very tingly. That's funny, I'm used to no one in particular. So I proceeded to wash my hands quickly with a bit of soap and water. That should do it, right? Later in the evening, the kids were quietly and happily playing together for once, my wife was baking a wonderfully smelling concoction, and life was just pretty swell. And then I got an itch. No special itch in particular. Just one of those usual itches that a guy can get on the shaft of his penis. I've had many in my 39 years of life. Just scratch it and carry on with life. Not today. No no, my friends. Today was not to be a usual day for me. I scratched. It felt good so I gave it a few more scratches. Not to arouse myself, but just because it felt good like a back scratch can feel good. Unbeknownst to me, I was spreading microscopic droplets of Satan's own saliva born pepper oil all over my little friend. I washed my hands as a proper gentleman does and then went about my business. Time passed. Actually it was only about 45 seconds. It began as a small tingling. The following was my next mistake in a long string of them. Before I knew what was going on, I decided to give Mr. Happy a few extra scratches. He had been a good boy so he needed that extra bit of love. More of Cthulhu's cream was scratched in. Now it really started to hurt. This is when I finally came to the grave realization that my otherwise pleasant day was about to get nightmarishly awful. I yelped something to my wife. In my mind I said honey, I'm heading to the bathroom in a manly voice. In actuality, I whimpered some kind of unintelligible gibberish to her before waddling as quickly as possible to the bathroom, pulling my pants down in the process. Now, I had options. I could take a shower, I could use my newly installed Christmas present, the bidet. Or I could squat in the bathtub and use the faucet as a life-giving waterfall. I chose the bidet firstly. Since it's really only made to squirt the backside and the front for women, I had to turn it on and maneuver my chubby body all around. Water shirted everywhere. It was a mess. A terrible, ineffective mess. Next up was the bathtub. I squatted down in all my nakedness and let the cold water run all over my frank and beans. It felt temporarily better but not great. Next, I chose the shower. Can tell you with no amount of uncertainty that even lukewarm water on the site of a pepper oil burn on the shaft of a penis feels like the devil has come to take you away penis first. I screamed. I was out of options. No amount of water helped. I was in so much pain but had to find options. The first thing I saw was to use milk or yogurt. We don't have yogurt. We do have milk. Fine. I put a towel on. The fibers of the towel felt like they were puncturing my skin. But I had to make it to the fridge. I got a nice big glass of milk. My wife had a wooden spoon halfway into a mixing bowl but she was frozen in place staring at her husband and wondering if he had finally fallen off the deep end. I waddled back toward the bathroom to the sound of one of my kids asking innocently why I was going to drink milk in the bathroom. After I made it back in, 
I closed the door and dipped my now bright red member fully into the milk. I heard a noise. I looked up. The doorknob was turning. I hadn't locked the door. The last thing I wanted was one of my girls walking in and having her first glimpse of a male penis to be from her father dipping it into a glass of milk. No, no, exclamation mark. The doorknob stopped turning. I waddled over, spilling milk everywhere in the process. I would not let this day get any worse. The next solution was alcohol. It seems counterintuitive, but I was out of options. I rubbed some isopropyl alcohol all over. Then I rubbed some milk, then water. Rinse and repeat for 30 minutes. Finally things were starting to look up. The burn was subsiding slightly. I didn't feel like I needed to cut it off to alleviate the pain. The satanic glory hole that I had found myself in was at an end. Afterwards, I took the coldest shower I have ever taken. I stepped out. Naked, shivering, penis looking like he'd lost a fight with a meat grinder, I was free. I was still in pain but I could see the light at the end of the tunnel. I found my loosest pair of boxers, gingerly put them on, and waddled out to the living room. My whole little family was watching me, half afraid and half curious at what misadventure I had gotten myself into this time. I had to explain to my girls that I scratched my bottom with pepper oil. Close enough. My wife wanted to see the damage. She stifled a giggle and told me she was sorry. She later told me we would laugh about this sometime. In the meantime, no peppers for me. Too long didn't read, I had pepper oil in my fingernails and accidentally scratched it into the shaft of my penis. I experienced the wrath of Satan himself. Penis looking like it lost a fight with a meat grind old man. Smiley face, smiley face. This is a really well written version of something we've all done. Bravo. We've all done? Question mark. Man, I guess I've missed this pain train until today. I will consider myself one of the lucky ones. This is so well written. Ah, ye oldie jalla penis mishap. Every time I read one of these stories I find myself asking why people ever handle spicy foods without gloves. I love stuffed jalapenos but will not touch a cut one without wearing surgical gloves. Nobody really thinks about how often we touch various parts of our bodies without thinking about it and there are a myriad of places you do not want pepper residue near.